you didn't want to cook dinner and you have a crock pot, I did want to just see that, but I, it probably will trip it. Let's just see if it does. I'm pretty sure it will because the maximum voltage is going to be too high, the maximum wattage. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Anchor Solix 2000 watt power station. Now this is a big boy. It can possibly be used for home backup or small house backup. And uh, you know, just to get you maybe through a day of power outages or take it with you. It should have rollers on it. So you can take it with you camping if you want to carry this much weight with you. But this is going to be all about this power station today. We're going to unbox it here. We are going to charge it up. They didn't send me any solar panels, so I'm going to use some other solar panels from a different brand. And we are going to charge this thing up, see how long it takes and what it can take on solar, on power from the house, see how fast it can charge, because that's always a benefit if they can charge fast, so we're not waiting for hours and hours to charge. And then we're going to run a bunch of stuff off of this and see really what we can do and how much it can handle. So let's get started with this anchor power station. Let's do it. All right, so definitely packed very well. You can see how it's got these straps on it. Everything is very well packed. And it looks like we got to open this kind of like we do with our bikes. So we, they want you to open the top and then flip it over. So if you're by yourself, go ahead and do one of these numbers. I guess you could open it the other way too, so it's facing up. Right now it's gonna be upside down. Pull that box off. Then, oh, looks like we got a little bit of shipping damage there. Hopefully it's packed good. All right, cool, so at least we know it's packed pretty dang well. And here it is, guys. So the Anchor 767 Portable Power Station, powerhouse, 2,048 watt hour. That's how the front's gonna look. Got some wheels here. Looks like we have a handle on the front. So AC charging in two hours. Solar panels, two and a half hours. Wow, they must have some high output solar panels. It's got a little couple stars there. So those are gonna be some big panels. And then car, of course, these all can charge off of a lighter adapter. It's gonna take almost 20 hours, but it's got a bunch of outlets. So it's got one of those 2400 watt high output plugs. So that's great. So you can run like your RV off of it. So this might be great for RVing or overlanding or something like that, where you need that output for microwaves, ovens, AC and all that kind of stuff. Three USB-C at 100 watt each, USB-A2 at 12 watt each, those are just the regular USBs. And then car lighter outlets, two at 120 each. So anyway, let's unbox this thing, see what it's all about. I'm excited, this is one of the biggest ones I've ever had. So also got some other ones from some other companies that I'm gonna be reviewing. So stay tuned guys, just if you wanna really see what these things can handle and what are all about. Here it is, Anchor Solix 767, user manual. And we got a little bag here. So nice little baggie to kind of store all your cables in. Let's see what we got in here first. So heavy duty wall plug for charging it at home. Heavy duty XT60 type bus rail. Wow, that's cool. Never seen one of these in a power station before. I have seen these connectors used, but look at that. So one, two, three, four, five, two, one. XT60 high power connectors, awesome. Then we got our charger for our lighter. So it looks like it's gonna be an input with this kind of XT60 connector that we're used to seeing in like RC chargers and stuff, little Velcro strap to hold that on. Cool, so that's everything in the accessory bag. And let's see what this thing looks like when we take it out of the box. All right, so this is gonna be kind of heavy. I'm gonna attempt to get this out myself. Yeah, so that comes off. Ooh, that's, that feels like 30 to 40 pounds. There it is, easy toe TM handle. Oh, does it have a, oh cool. All right, so we have an extension handle as well. I thought it was just gonna be this built-in one. Let's see that. So we have kind of like soft plastic, really hard rubber wheels, and we can pull this thing up and tow it around with the handle. So it seems like it's pretty mobile. I'm not gonna have to carry it and lift it everywhere. And then this locks just like a luggage carrier. You push in here and it slides right back in and clicks. So that's not gonna come out until you press that button. See how that works? Nice. So guys, let's take a look at the front. And that's kind of neat. It's like a light here. It's just like a light bar. Give you some, I guess, ambient light when you're camping or whatever you're doing. Or to even just see the controls and stuff, what's going on here, light up the front of it. Gonna take off this screen protector. At least they're protecting their stuff well. Well, it says GAN Prime, which is kind of like their trademarked 
technology, I guess. Display, we have a USB connection. Awesome, so it looks like this is a smart kind of wireless power station. Some of the ones I'm reviewing uh, don't have this smart kind of connectivity for your cell phone and monitoring, so that is a good feature there. Power saving button, remember we have four AC outlets, and there's our big boy outlet for that 2400 watt to like run your RV and stuff like that, your full system, or even your house for that matter. You know, if you wanted to plug in your inlet box to your house for home backup power, there it is, a high output there. You can turn your AC outlets off and on. That's for this whole rail here. Then you have your car socket, and these are just those, you know, kind of lighter adapter plugs. You can turn that off and on. And then it looks like there's no off and on for these guys, but they're saying IQ3. So remember these are three 100 watt. I think these were two, what is it, 12 watt? That's to run our little peripherals, you know, charge your iPad, charge your cell phones at high speed. That's all there is on the front. Pulling it over to the back, and this is kind of interesting actually. It's got little rubber stoppers here. We see a bunch of ports. Now these are huge cooling ports. So we're gonna have lots of cooling here, but this is interesting how there's little rubber stoppers. So it's almost like it's meant to be able to put up like that if you wanted to, you know? I guess that's for luggage, for like carrying purposes. So if you wanted to just start it like this and pull out your luggage carrier, I do like how they have those rubber stoppers on the back. So if you did want to set it down like this, it's not going to scratch the finish. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's take a look at the back side here. So here is our inputs, right? A little bit of a slight con. I can't even open this with my fingers. So they need to have more of a lip here or something because that's not even opening. This guy here has like a little silicone door, which I wish this top one had, but that's if you want to extend the battery capacity on this and they can stack, right? So you don't have to necessarily buy two power stations. You can buy just the battery and they will link into the power station to give you that much more capacity. So I like that expandability. So it's almost like I'm gonna have to get my little knife here to open this up, which is kind of unfortunate. There we go. Is not too hard to open. I just can't fit my finger in there. And you can see the ports here. So there's our input. Remember that was that XT60. So that's a 10 amp, 11 to 32 volt for solar power charging. And this will also be for our car charging, right? So 11 to 32 volt, 10 amp, and 36 to 60, 20 amp. So the 20 amp is probably gonna be your solar panels. So 32 volt, if you have the high voltage solar panels, it's gonna put out some amperage. That's quite a bit, 20 amps. Reset switch, and then there's our 120 AC input. If you're in the US like I am, and you just plug that right into your wall to charge it up. It does say right here, recharge to activate before using for the first time. And then it says to preserve the battery lifespan, charge to 100% after using. If you plan to store, recharge to 100% every three months. So that's battery maintenance. That's interesting that they're telling you to charge it to 100% after using. Usually you want these to sit at like 50 to 60% if you're not using them for a while. But these are likely to have a smart discharge. If it's sitting for a while, it's gonna discharge to the, like that 50, 60% on its own. Nice big cooling vents on this side as well. I did want to show you this little door here. It is magnetic. So if I just slowly push, you see that? So this little magnet. And that's it for the unboxing in a nutshell. Let's see if we can find a solar panel that'll run this thing. Looks like it has to have a minimum of 32 volts. So we'll stick it in the sun for a while, see how fast it can charge on the solar panel. And then we'll take it off before it's fully charged and see how fast it can charge on the house. Okay guys, got the solar panel set up. Let's see how this thing does in some gravel. Actually not too bad. As you can see, I got the solar panel set up over here. Now these are some big boy solar panels from a different company. So Anchor, if you're listening, just send your solar panels so I'm not using another company's solar panels. But these guys are gigantic and this is a portable array and it's supposed to put out 330 watts, guys. So that's great for a portable kind of carrying case solar panel. And these will do right around the 32 volt area is what they say. So I'm gonna go ahead and wheel this guy around here and let's get it in the shade and hook it up. Okay, so I have this adapter. Look how thick these solar panel wires are. So these are pretty dang thick. So I have an adapter to kind of bring it down to the XT60. And that was why they included that little power bar XT60 splitter in the box. So you could hook up multiple high voltage panels, right? 30 or above voltage. So we're not plugging it into the front, we're plugging it into the back. And again, a little bit difficulty opening <laughs> if you don't have fingernails, geez. 
there we go anyway let's moving on i'm gonna plug right in here and let's see if we can get a you know 32 volt charge 32 to 60 so that's amazing so you could put multiple high output solar panels in here i'm gonna plug in all right hearing that guy kick on all right guys so we have power coming from the solar panels and it looks like it's 86 percent charged already coming from the factory and look at that input so the screen will sleep you got this little display button here to turn it off and on so i'm just turning it back on and look at that input 302 watts and that's not even at the optimal time of day so it's going to recharge within one hour so that's great. So from 86%, looks like we have an hour left. So it's kind of smart in thinking it knows how quickly to charge it. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and let this sit for a half hour and let's see how far it can charge. And then we'll bring it back into the house and plug it in, see how fast it can charge on the 120 power. But that's not bad for a 350 watt solar panel, not even at the peak time of day and I'm not even aligned perfectly. We'll just let that bad boy charge up there. Remember, it's good to keep it in the shade keep the temperature down especially when it's charging keep it in the shade and we're gonna set a timer for a half an hour okay guys so I'm recording my screen now and I want to go into the Android App Store since I have an Android device you can either scan the QR code that was on the instructions or just look for anchor app looks like they have a few different apps here but I want to do this one right here I'm gonna go ahead and download this one all right let's open this thing up it says you need to connect your power station to your home Wi-Fi before you actually start this but I'm just gonna see what it says here and it looks like you got to sign up so if you're not signed in you can either sign up through your Amazon account or sign up through an email and password. I'm just gonna use my Amazon account. All right, so just signed in with my Amazon. That's pretty convenient. Didn't really have to do anything special. And wanna add devices. So let's see here. You can look at your profile, settings, and devices. That's all we can do. So we have a plus up at the top right, or I'm just gonna click that add device button, agree and continue, allow. So it looks like it's trying to scan and it's probably not gonna find anything because I haven't connected the anchor power station yet so remember we have the 767 powerhouse and at least it shows you what you need to do press the iot button for two seconds until the logo starts flashing cool so let me try that real fast okay so it looks like just that usb button there press and hold it here and there we go so you can see that little white flash on the usb and then we're just gonna device has been reset good okay bring your phone closer to device interesting so I need to bring my phone right up to it. And there it is, added successfully. So that was easy. That was super easy, oh my gosh. And now I have everything I need to see right here. Awesome. On the display, it is saying the little on the right hand corner, there is a little icon that's saying like a wireless device is connected. Is it possible to have any worse glare? Anyway, there it is. See on the bottom right, little like iPad or device right there. Okay guys, and now I can just basically be wherever I want in the vicinity. That was a really easy connection. And I guess as long as I'm within 30 feet Bluetooth range, it will show me all this stuff. So as you can see on the screen, it's saying 90%, shows you the degree, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I do have 292 watts, which the solar panels are putting in right now. Remaining charge time also up above the power station icon is 42 minutes. We're gonna take it off before that because we got about 11 minutes left on the solar panels. I wanna just go into the settings here and check this out, guys. AC recharging power, wow. Looks like it can go to 1440. That's huge. That's the most I've ever seen on one of these power stations. And you can put light SOS mode. That's cool. If you have an emergency in the forest and you have that power station with you and you have somebody searching for you, go ahead and put that light on. Screen brightness. I like to have my screen brightness high. So I'm going to turn that to high there. Screen timeout. See there it is 30 seconds. So you can change that however you want. You can go all the way up to 30 minutes and all the way down to 20. 30 seems like a good option. Device name, you can change it. So if I wanted to call it the Anchor, which will help me a little more for identifying all these power stations I have. Oh, that's cool. You can change your temperature, Celsius or Fahrenheit. You got your serial number, help and feedback. Firmware upgrade, let's check that out real quick. Currently using the latest firmware. So it's using that data connection to query the internet. That's great. So I didn't have to do any special setup. Just basically press the button, download the app and link them up. Cool guys. Well, I got about 10 more minutes to charge on the solar. 
We're charging at 294 watts on solar. Love and how you can monitor these smart power stations now. Some of them don't have this, so the ones that do are really convenient. So we'll give it about 10 more minutes and we'll plug it into the house, see if we can get that 1400 watt. It looks like Anchor, they've got kind of a product line, like a whole ecosystem of all these different devices. So if I press plus here, uh, we saw that down here. So we have coolers they make, power banks, and portable power stations so far. So the power banks would be, looks like they just have one so far, prime power bank, basically smaller power stations. Power coolers, they have three, 30, 40, and 50. That probably stands for the capacity of it. Cool, I didn't even know they made coolers. That's pretty neat. And here's the portable power station. So remember, we looked at this already. I've got the 767, but they make some other ones here. Looks like the 767 and this one over here, down here on the right middle, the Solix F2600 are the two big ones. So great options for portable backup power. All right, guys, we are right at a half hour. This is about 30 seconds over a half hour, and let's see what's up here. So I'll have the screen on my phone monitoring with the smart app. Usually it was um, maxing out like 295 was the most I could get with these solar panels, but we still got up to 93% in a half hour from 86%. So that's roughly, what, 7% of charge in a half an hour with these solar panels at that wattage. So that's pretty good to me, and I love how it's saying on the top of this power station remaining charge time. So that's really convenient to know. So you can plan kind of around that. And so another 30 minutes and we should be topped off. And that's exactly right as far as what it says because that's another 7% from 93%. So I'm gonna pull this off guys and let's bring it onto a power outlet on the house and see how fast this thing can charge on there. All right guys, well it sure is convenient to have this rollability on this thing. That is such a great option. Remember, we wanna plug right in here to the back. And let's see what we got. So immediately kind of registers. And as you can see, our AC input is going up. Wow, 1453 it hit for a second. That was pretty cool. So it will hit that 1400 watt zone even when it's this much charged. So as you, as you can see, it's slowly going down 929-ish watts. So that's usually what these things do, but it looks like it can charge at that maximum of 14. And at this rate, six minutes of charge time remaining. So you'll be able to charge this thing up really quick on just AC from your house. So that's a really good option and I can monitor all this. So I'm gonna time my watch for six minutes and see how accurate that is. And while we're waiting for this six minutes for this thing to charge, guys, I just wanted to run by the light real fast. So you probably see it in my camera here. You have that light control at the very bottom of the first screen of the app. If you take a look at that light while I'm pressing the button here, low, medium, Hi. So great option for like an ambient light. And you can also control it, of course, from a button, right? So you have the same controls on the button as well. Later. All right, guys, so that six minutes is up and it looks like maybe their smart monitoring isn't quite as smart as I thought it would be. So as you can see, I'll be recording my screen again. We're only at 97% in that six minutes, but it's still saying six minutes above the device. So the top off is usually kind of strange like that on these things. It's, it's never what it says it is. Only a couple devices I've seen are actually telling you exactly what it is. So during the charge, it may be pretty accurate, but at the top off, it's very, I guess, hard for it to calculate exactly how long it's gonna take. So it's still saying six minutes on the app and went down to 530 watts about of charge. And that looks like it's gonna keep dropping as it starts to top off. Finally, 100% charged. As you can see, I'll have the app up again. And that took a total of 11 more minutes, guys, to charge up. So. Not the worst, not the best, being that this was only 11 minutes, I can live with that. A Little bit of a con, so maybe they can update the software to be a little bit more accurate. But what these things also do is, when you top them off, it's kind of calibrating the computer on board. So I think usage after this should be more accurate, after it kind of like calibrates it to knowing how long it took to its maximum. So while it was at 99%, it was saying six minutes on the top up here for the whole time on the top of the power station 
in the app. So maybe they can update that a little bit, make it a little bit more accurate. I think it's time to plug a bunch of peripherals into this. And the cool thing about this is you can turn on and off like some of the other power stations, the outputs. So as you can see, I can turn on the AC output. I can turn it off if I wanted to. I can set, looks like a timer. So there's a timer button here and check that out. So you can customize or set these presets to stay on and it just starts doing a countdown. That's actually pretty cool. I haven't seen that before. Carport as well. And you can also time that as well if you want to. Same deal. And then it looks like the USB just kind of turns on automatically. There is no power button for this USB rail here. Oh, that was interesting. So I just lost connection. So let's see if we can get this thing back up here. Well, I'm just going to hold this thing in and try to reconnect here. Let's see if we can get our our Bluetooth reconnected. Yeah, so that's odd. So a little bit of a con I'm seeing on the Bluetooth stability. So to give it the benefit of the doubt, I'm gonna try one more time to hold this thing in. So you can see we have USB blinking. I'm tapping back on the power station. There it goes. Okay, so I guess if you have that issue, just try to reconnect a few times with holding in that USB button. So possibly, hopefully, some bugs they can work out because I was just standing here about, you know, 10 feet away from it the whole time. Anyway, let's run some devices off this thing and see really how much it can handle. Since this thing has remote turn on, let's see here. Let's turn it on remotely on the AC rail. Cool. And it's cool because as soon as you turn it on, the screen kind of lights up. So pretty much anything you do, whether it be turning off and on the light remotely or whatever, it will turn the screen on. So I think that's kind of a good feature instead of having to just push it like if you're sitting across from it and you press something, you want it to light up and just look at the screen, you can. First thing I wanted to test guys is to see if this USB rail automatically turns on, which it should because there's no switch for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my iPad here and I'm just gonna plug this into one of the regular USB outlets. We're gonna make sure it starts charging. So that immediately detected has a little USB sign here and it looks like we are charging there. So that's great. So we know that the iPad's charging and if we look on the screen and actually on my phone screen as well, we can see that we're using 11 watts for that iPad. This is just the iPad mini. This phone that I'm holding in my hand, this has the Super Voop charging. So it uses its own charger to have like 80 watt charging and my, Phone should start charging and we should see wattage come up here. It's already 90% charged, so it's probably not gonna use that much power, but now we're getting 30 watts. If I unplug from the AC, plug into one of these guys here, that's pretty cool. We get an icon that on the phone as well as on the screen here on the unit that we have a USB-C plugged in and it actually tells you which port it's plugged into also. So I've never seen that before, that's pretty smart. So we're getting a total of 26 watts. Also have a drone controller. So if you guys are looking to, you know, take your drones with you, have a power station to do your drone work, here's a Mavic 3 controller. As we can see, that's charging as well. So you have all of this versatility. It knows which port it's plugged into, which tells you on your phone. So lots of cool stuff. And it tells you, wow, that's pretty cool. Specifically what each port is drawing. So if you look on the right of my phone screen here, eight watts, on the bottom rail of the USB-C and 11 watts outputting to the iPad. So pretty dang smart, man. That's pretty awesome. So we know it can run, you know, low power USB stuff, but I really wanted to test and just see what it can handle on this AC stuff. So here we go. Usually people want to run a fridge when they're camping or in their trailer. So dual zone fridge, let's plug this guy in. All right, that guy is just booting up now. And let's see what we're pulling. Okay, so we're now pulling 79 watts. The good thing about a cooler like this or fridge in general or freezer is it doesn't need to be run all the time. It's gonna get to its temperature and it's gonna sit there and not draw any power. So like if you're camping or you're on the road, it's not gonna be a constant draw. So I think this thing draws about 50 watts at its maximum to cool down both zones. And then when it reaches those temperatures, it's just basically sitting there until the temperature drops a few degrees in each zone, and then it will kick back on. So as it is now, we can see that we have a total AC output. It doesn't give you the same kind of display as the USB rail on the AC outlets. We just have a total AC 
draw of 46 watts about right now. Okay, so we got the fridge going. We only got 46 watts coming out to our AC. And you can see what it thinks it has time left for. So no problem running a fridge all night and then charging it solar or AC or something in the daytime because we have 22 hours remaining running all these things right now. I'm sure that's gonna be kind of an estimate but at least it's better than nothing. So pretty cool. So I just woke up in the morning. I want to boil a pot of water to make some coffee or hot cocoa when I'm camping. Let's plug this kettle in and let's turn this bad boy on. We're going to watch and monitor the screen and the phone at the same time. Turning the kettle on, we get a cool blue light and let's see what we got. Okay, our AC draw just went way up to 1100 watts about and that sucker is gonna boil water quick it sounds like it's already starting there so you know you're not going to be running this much wattage constantly because this will only last it says one hour and 36 minutes on the screen and the phone so you know well, one and a half hours approximately. So while that's going, we want to also cook some toast. Uh, I want to make a couple of pieces of toast for breakfast on our camping trip. So I'm going to plug this toaster in and let's just do a standard. I usually like mine about, you know, a little bit of brown. So we're going to go at number five. That's going to go on for 226 on a dual zone toaster. Let's see if this can handle a toaster as well. So we're up guys to 2000 watts total draw. That's with the USB and everything. And with our AC, we're at 1980 watts on just the AC. So that's great because usually, you know, this is the maximum you're usually gonna do. If you did wanna cook dinner and you have a crock pot, I did wanna just see that, but I, it probably will trip it. Let's just see if it does. I'm pretty sure it will because the maximum voltage is gonna be too high, the maximum wattage. So I'm plugging in the crock pot and say I wanna do an air crisp, you know, I just wanna air crisp something for 10 minutes. And that's, now this is probably gonna trip it. So we wanna watch the phone screen and everything and look at the unit. Let's press start. Whoa, 2887. It's still running it? What? Are you kidding me? Holy smokes. Okay, now I heard that fan kick on. That sucker is going, man. So it initially started pretty high. So the burst current for this thing was high. Remember it was 2,800, but now it's settling in right around 1,600. So that's pretty amazing. I thought this was gonna trip it, but it was able to do the short burst on the Ninja Crock-Pot Air Crisper. And it has everything running. This is amazing. I have not seen one yet that can do all this together. Usually the larger ones, 